Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you to the high-level meeting on migration and human rights towards the 2013 high-level dialogue on international migration and development. We should be clear that all migrants are entitled to all human rights, that human rights are not a matter of charity, nor are they a reward for obeying immigration rules. This is the clear message of the human rights framework. Migrants are not development commodities or security challenges. Rather, they are human beings with fundamental human rights. Human rights are not just rhetorical phrases. Human rights are practical and universal expressions of the inherent dignity and value of all human beings. They have been developed and voluntarily accepted by all states. Every right has content, has meaning. The right to health, for example, means that legislative and other measures must be put in place to enable migrants to access health care services. To give practical effect to this right, states must collect reliable and relevant data on migrants with a focus on those most marginalized and vulnerable, taking care that the data is not accessible to immigration authorities. It is my belief that as human mobility becomes more complex, the journeys taken by many migrants more perilous, and the situation in which they live and work more precarious, the need to base policy responses to migration on human rights standards becomes ever more important. And it is for this reason that my office is recommending in a report on the governance of international migration being released today, that global discussion and cooperation on migration should take place more regularly and more integrally within the context and under the auspices of the United Nations. The UN offers a common platform for dialogue and cooperation on migration, a space in which there can be systematic interaction among all stakeholders, including states, employers, civil society, and migra migrants themselves, on a broad range of cross-cutting cross migration issues and where they can identify and address policy and knowledge gaps and emerging issues. We need urgently to demystify migration and to present a more accurate picture of contemporary mobility. To do this, we need to focus less on the flows, stocks, and waves of migration per se, and more on the individual human rights and situation of migrants themselves. At its heart, migration is fundamentally about human beings. Denying migrants their human rights also compromises their ability to contribute to the social and economic development of their countries of origin and destination. Hence, and as pointed out by the Global Migration Group, and I quote, protecting human rights is not only a legal obligation, it is also a matter of public interest and intrinsically linked to human development. In Switzerland, we, well, we have over 20% uh, uh, foreign population. More than one quarter of the workforce does not hold a Swiss passport. Protecting their rights, promoting their integration, and creating an environment of non-discrimination and equal opportunities is therefore not only a moral issue, but it is also our economic, social, and cultural interest. Today, we can recognize our shared responsibility to uphold human rights of migrants and join our effort to identify the new challenges, the protection gaps arising from the new drivers of displacement, and to cooperate for more coordinated actions to better protect the rights of migrants. At the international arena, high-level dialogue is one of the multifarious uh, processes going on migration. These processes bear testimony that in order to enhance the effect in development, human rights of migrants exist as an important factor. Unless the fundamental human rights inter alia the right to education, health, food security, access to water, etc., are not met, the full benefit for migrants cannot be accrued. 
we should take up the opportunity to ensure that the outcome, in whatever form it is, ensures that the migration takes place with the dignity for all migrants. I wish to remind everyone that all migrants, by virtue of their human dignity and without discrimination, and with two narrowly defined exceptions, the right to vote and be elected, and the right to enter and stay in the country, are protected by international human rights law on the same footing as citizens. This applies regardless of their administrative status or situation. The two human rights covenants, for example, explicitly refer to national origin as a prohibited ground of discrimination in the enjoyment of civil, political, economic, social, and cultural rights. Human rights are not only citizens' rights. Migrants are human beings with human rights, not only agents for economic development through inter alia, the sending of remittances or contributions to economic outputs. Thus, human rights lie at the heart of all discussions about migrants and must do so at the high-level dialogue. I believe that there's a need for greater involvement of the UN in the global debate on migration. My General Assembly report thus examines the framework for migration both inside and outside the UN and looks at both the global, regional, bilateral and national levels of governance. One recommendation, among many others, which I'm presenting to the report and has already been mentioned by uh, other actors, is to hold regular high-level dialogues every three years, for example, which should be interactive, action-oriented, each with a rights-based negotiated outcome document. I believe this would contribute to better protection of the human rights of migrants. To be respected, rights must be not merely formally acknowledged and their application mon monitored, but the ratification of fundamental conventions is necessary. But we also must recognize, however regrettably, that this has not happened. This has not happened. And there's no point in pretending that it has. And we have to move forward in that context. And that context, by that context, I mean initiatives which further the debate in a constructive way and bring people to a recognition that more needs to be done. I think the atmosphere is changing. I think that there is a recognition now that we have to view seriously the human rights issues of migrants because it is no longer a subject which is marginal to political developments around the, role, around the world. It is a central issue for both developed and developing countries, and they have to develop a new perspective which has to be founded on basic core principles, and those core principles are set out in the UN Charter itself. It is undeniable that development is an important facet of international migration, and it is important that the nexus between the two is discussed by states. But we must not lose sight that the main stakeholders of international migration are migrants themselves. Unlike international trade, migration is not about goods and services. <clears throat> As the High Commissioner reminded us in her intervention at the beginning of this meeting, it is about people. Without migrants, there is no migration, and migrants' human rights must come first. Discussing migration's benefits for development in the absence of human rights also ignores the fact that a migrant who is being exploited at work or who is detained for prolonged periods because of his or her status cannot contribute to the development of either their country of origin through remittances or to their country of destination. Human rights is a cross-cutting issue and must be included as a central consideration in any discussion on international migration and development. The human rights of migrants is not a separate, loose-standing subject. It underpins all other migration topics, topics which are amongst themselves interwoven. Looking at the second round table, here pursuing a high road approach would mean promoting a rights-based and gender-sensitive approach uh, that promotes fair and transparent migration policies grounded in due process of law and has at its center the principle of non-discrimination and importantly decriminalization of irregular migrants. There is a real need to decontroversialize migration. Migration is something to manage, not a problem to be solved. Mainstreaming a human rights-based approach to migration in general requires integrated planning and management. 
at all levels and for all aspects of migration. That's a whole of government and whole of society approach for the whole of migration. Not doing so will undermine the potential development, the developmental outcomes for both the countries of origin and destination. Just until very recently, we were still debating whether or the extent of human rights in the case of migrant workers or migrants. We were still discussing or being or seeing in a very evident way this um, tension based on a false dilemma between uh, human rights and the sovereignty of states to decide how they want to implement their own policies and laws. Today, nevertheless, we see an entirely different environment, which is that we all are basically agreeing on that. No one, at least not very openly, would dare to say within the UN, as we were used to hear not so far ago, or not so long ago, that human rights might be limited or restricted or not applied or not applicable to migrants. The challenges, in my view, in the view of Mexico, are of course there. We have to strengthen that. We have to have better instruments. We have to have stronger resolutions. We have to have bigger consensus, and so on and so forth. But the real challenge is in the politics of this debate. The real challenge is in the efficiency or effectiveness or not of the multilateral system as a way to improve or overcome these challenges. While the gains for migration, from migration are apparent, it does not necessarily follow that migrants are empowered or protected at all stages of the process. Awareness of rights does not necessarily lead to the ability to exercise those rights. Although we are born into a world where the majority of states recognize the inherent human rights for each individual, if the rights are not communicated and upheld by states in national legislation, respected by stakeholders, including the private sector, and claimed by citizens and migrants alike, a human rights framework is not implemented. Awareness of the different roles and responsibilities of duty bearers and rights holders and removal of barriers to access rights is the first step towards empowerment and realization of rights. But we also need to ask, have adequate resources been set aside by governments to ensure that laws or ratified conventions guaranteeing the protection mechanisms and entitlements for migrants can in fact be implemented? Have state officials been trained to protect and empower migrants? And have steps been taken to monitor the effectiveness of implementation, including combat combating xenophobia? Are there independent bodies that migrants can turn to for redress without fear of discrimination? The ILO estimates that over 50% of the 214 million international migrants today are economically active. Together with their families, migrant workers comprise over 90% of this total and migration is growing. Indeed, reports due to be released within the next few days suggest a further increase of around 9%, taking that figure to over 230 million. Almost half of international migrants are women, and one in eight is between the age of 15 and 24. This highlights the labour dimensions of international migration. Moreover, South-South migration is as large as South-North migration, each representing about one-third of the global total of international migrants. About 50% of emigrants from developing countries move to another developing country, and largely within their region. Intra-regional mobility accounts for two-thirds of global migration. Within the regions, 80% occurs between countries with a common border. There is a growing consensus that the way forward is through job-centred 
development underpinned by respect for human rights, <laughs> including labour rights, supported by a social protection floor and participatory process through social dialogue. This is central to the themes of the high-level dialogue. Facilitating labour migration and protecting the rights of migrant workers to ensure them decent work will require that development strategies focus on decent work, equal treatment of mi migrant workers and meeting the social and family needs of migrant workers. Through our research and work with our members, with states and UN bodies, we know that in the context of migration, upholding human rights is not just an obligation, but it can actually be beneficial for states, communities and individual migrants themselves. So in response to the growing detention of children uh, for the reasons of not having documentation, our organisation began research a number of years ago looking uh, directly at this practice interviewing children who had been detained. We found a number of things. First of all, we found that it's never in the best interest of a child to be detained for migration-related reasons. Um, the Committee on the Rights of the Child has recently clarified this, that detention of a child due to migration-related reasons for theirs or their parents' status constitutes a child rights violation. From guardianship to shelters, case management models, we found many examples of alternatives to detention across the globe which allow states to act in the best interest of the child while still addressing their own legitimate migration management concerns. Turning to the forthcoming second high-level dialogue on international migration and development this year, the long title for the roundtable that we're discussing today in this panel, uh, maybe unwittingly it lists the human rights of migrants and the acts of smuggling of migrants and of trafficking in persons as if they are separate issues, but in our view they are not. It's crucial to emphasize that an effective response to these specific transnational crimes requires a nuanced understanding of the legal, social, and economic pressures that make it easier for migrant smugglers and traffickers to exploit the vulnerabilities that can result from that most human characteristic, the desire to seek a better life. It is not possible to respond to these crimes without taking concrete action regarding the protection of the human rights of migrants. And it is thus not possible to meaningfully address these issues without a comprehensive human rights-based approach to migration.